give you a few minutes to do that. songs in the Yeah, remember how many songs it is. Yeah, and I always you know, get the jokes about the drummers. And I say, well, they play a little drummer for you. But we could. <laughs> Joy, joy, joy. 
We're gonna start over, Ron. <laughs> this is what happens with live music. There it is. I just had to sing a little bit. Hey, that's what happens. For this next one, just listen to the bells. <laughs>
Shakers. <laughs> you may be seated at this time for communion. more reason to be miserable than this one. Yet no man was more joyful. First time was a coward. Servants were at his fingertips, but the snap of his fingers changed the course of history. His name was known and loved. He had everything. Wealth, power, respect. And then he had nothing. Students of the event still ponder it. Historians stumble as they attempt to explain it. How could a king lose everything in one instant? One moment, he was royalty. The next, he was in poverty. His bed became, at best, a borrowed palace, and usually a hard earth. He never owned even the most basic mode of transportation and was dependent upon handouts for his income. He was sometimes so hungry he would eat raw grain. He knew what it was like to be rained on, to be cold. He knew what it was like to not have a home. In his kingdom, he had been revered now he was ridiculed. His neighbors tried to lynch him. Some called him a lunatic. His family tried to confine him to their house. Those who didn't ridicule him tried to use him. They wanted favor. They wanted tricks. He was a novelty. They wanted to be seen with him. That is, until being with him was out of fashion. Then they wanted to kill him. He was accused of a crime he had never committed. Witnesses were hired to lie. The jury was rigged. No lawyer was assigned to his defense. A judge, swayed by politics, handed down the death penalty. And then they killed him. He left as he came, penniless. He was buried in a borrowed grave. His funeral financed by friends. So he once had everything. He died with nothing. He should have been miserable and bitter. He had every right to be a pot of boiling anger. But he wasn't. He was joyful. Joyful when he was poor. Joyful when he was abandoned and betrayed. Even joyful when he was hung on a tool of torture, his hands pierced with six-inch Roman spikes. What type of 
joy is this? I call it sacred delight. It is sacred because it is not of this earth. What is sacred is God, and this joy is God. It is delight because delight can satisfy and surprise. Delight is Bethlehem shepherds dancing a jig outside a cave. Delight is Mary watching God sleep in a feed shop. Delight is white-haired Simeon praising God who is about to be circumcised. What is sacred delight? It is God doing what gods would be doing only in your wildest dreams. Wearing diapers, riding donkeys, washing feet, dozing in storms. It's the too good to be true coming true. Think about God's joy, which consequences cannot quench. There is a delicious gladness that comes from God that cannot be stolen. A sacred delight. And it is within our reach in the person of Jesus. <clears throat> so let's pause as we come to the table in the stable to be fed and healed with his body and his blood. Let us remember that Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. Yesterday, the baby king on a bed of hay in a smelly stable with animals as the guests of honor. So many missed out on the miracle happening. Joseph and Mary's family, the innkeeper, others too busy to take notice. But oh, those who did notice, they experienced the miracle of indescribable joy. Today, the King of Kings, who rules forever and ever on his throne on our behalf, he is the same now and forever as he was then. Humble, kind, full of mercy and grace, and always ready to forgive. So many still miss out on the miracle of him to be. Don't be one of them. Open your heart and remember all he has done for you and receive joyfully the sacrament of his love. Take the bread and eat. Remember his broken body. He did this for you and me. Take the juice and drink. Remember the blood he shed for the forgiveness of your sins and mine. We thank you, Lord, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you for the joy we experience through your love. Will the ushers please come forward?
The third week of the Advent is known as the Shepherd Candle. This pink candle reflects the joy that comes through Jesus' arrival and through the salvation he has gifted us. This Sunday celebrates the passage, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 and 5. It verse extolling us to rejoice the empty. The Lord is near. This week, let us remember that the good news of Jesus' birth has the power to bring us great joy this Christmas season. Our joy isn't dependent on what is going on in our life, in our world, or the people that are with. It doesn't depend on the gifts we give. The gifts we give find their retreat. No earthly things can ever our joy comes through, comes from you. The joy that flooded the hearts of the shepherds, the angels, the wise men, the hosts of heaven, and Mary and Joseph. It is the joy of those who gathered around the world because they unfulfilled your promise. Mary and Joseph believed that and were able to feel the joy of holding baby Jesus in their arms. The shepherds and wise men believed. The angels and the science experienced a great gladness of worshiping the Messiah. Father, you offer that same joy to us now if we know you and recognize Jesus as our Savior and Lord. You gave us a reason to celebrate and you gave us the unspeakable gift of Jesus Christ. You came to dwell among us. You went to Calvary's cross for us. You overcame death and you rose from the dead for us. You forgive our sins and give eternal life when we believe in you. Yeah. 
we just come to you this morning we just thank you and praise you for the joy that you bring into our lives Lord I pray for Sam as he brings our message this morning that our hearts and our minds would just be open to hear from you and Lord we just praise you and thank you and give you all of the glory Amen Wow Amen and Amen Kids, you are dismissed to Children's Church. Thank you all for being here again. I'm Pastor Sam. Welcome, welcome out on TV land. Man, God has really moved already. Can we give God a big hand clap? 
Now, if you don't mind, just leaning over to your neighbor and say, life change. Let's do it one more time, a little louder. Life change. Do you believe that? Life change. The baby boy, eight pounds, six ounces, changes everything. God is so, so good. Let's give Jesus a cheer, huh? Can we give Jesus a cheer? The baby boy really changes everything. Eight pounds, six ounces. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She'll give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The baby boy changes everything. God with us. The baby boy, fully God. Because of the baby boy, you have divine hope. You have divine hope. Yes, you do. The baby boy changes everything. You have divine hope. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about the things we cannot see. The baby boy changes everything. Because of the baby boy, you have divine peace. Yes, you do. Because of the baby boy, you have divine peace. The baby boy is the prince of peace. Can I get an amen? The baby boy changes everything. John 14, 27. The peace I leave you, the peace I give you is not like the world. Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Some of you are leaving here and you're letting your hearts be troubled. No, 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 no. The baby boy changes everything. We got hope. We got peace. And today we're going to learn that we have joy. Even when life gets crazy, crazy hard and life gets upside down, we still have divine joy because of the baby boy. Joy equals Jesus and Jesus equals joy. Psalm 118, 24, today is the day the Lord has made and let us rejoice and be glad in it even when it's crazy, even when it's upside down because we have the baby boy. Let's go to the Old Testament, Nehemiah 8, 10. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Can you say that with me? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the baby boy changed everything. Let's go back to the New Testament, Hebrews 12, starting in verse 1. Jesus gives an example of joy in the worst possible situation. Yet Jesus had joy. Hebrews 12, what a great text. It says, therefore... Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let's stop right there. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witness. Hersher Christian Church, people are watching us. People are watching us to see if the baby boy really has life-changing power. And I want to ask you this morning, I'm asking me too, how important is our witness to us? How important is our testimony to us? Let's get specific this morning. How important is our witness of joy and our testimony of joy? We have to be really careful, and I say we, I'm with you, not at you, not to fall into that chicken little syndrome. Remember chicken little? Can I have chicken little? Remember chicken little? The sky is falling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. We can, we can have a negative bend about everything, and I say we. No, 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 no. Even when life's upside down, we have joy because we believe the baby boy changed everything. Yeah. We should be the most joyful people to be around. We should be a joy to be around, even when life is upside down and maybe not going our way. Listen, we got the baby Jesus. Eight pounds, six ounces changed Everything, the baby boy is fully God. Um, James 1.22, that's his name. That's the nickname. That's how I remember him, James 1.22. And every time I hung out with him, he radiated with joy. And I called him James 1.22 because James 1.22 says, do not listen to the word and so deceive yourself, but do what it says. And this guy was a word man. But it was pretty cool. After every Bible study I had with him and some of his friends, he just radiated with joy. Did I say that? And he'd say, Pastor Sam, what can I pray about for you and your family and your church? 
And I'd tell him, and we'd hold hands. You know, he was a big old boy. And man, he would just pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. It was awesome. Did I tell you he radiated with joy? And then I'd give him a hug, and I'd say, I'll see you next week, because I could leave because he couldn't, because he was incarcerated. He was in jail during some serious time, but yet the joy of Jesus was all over him. I want that kind of joy. What about you? Even when life gets upside down, I want to be a witness and a testimony that the baby boy changes everything. Oh, Dale, Dale Edwards. He's in heaven now, perfectly healed, and I'm so happy for him. He was an elder back at Weber Street. Dale was absolutely a joy to be around. And one of the, 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 the best loving, one of the best loving and elders and team player, and he just radiated with joy, even when his life was upside down. Oh, did I tell you, he was legally blind. Couldn't see a thing, and the man radiated with joy because of the baby Jesus. I want that kind of joy. What about you? When life is upside down, we want to be a witness and a testimony to the baby boy. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. I know you've heard thousands of stories about her, about my grandma Grace. But I'm just being honest. I mean, in all the times that I knew her and I spent with her, she just radiated joy. And you know what? Maybe she did this, but she never did it in front of me. I never, ever, ever heard my grandma Grace say an ill word about anybody. Never, at least not in front of me. This woman radiated with joy. She didn't have an easy life, but she had the baby Jesus. She had a real life-changing relationship with the baby Jesus. Life change. Will you say that with me? Life change. Life change, life change, and you can have it. You can have it for real. Eight pounds, six ounces, changed everything. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, people are watching us. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Would you mind bowing your head? We're going to have a quick prayer service. Pray to yourself. Ask God right now to remove the, the sin that entangles you, that hinders you, that's keeping you from being the witness and the testimony that Jesus wants you to be. Ask him right now. Ask him to take it. Get rid of it. Remove it. Empower you. Because we want the world to know that eight pounds, six ounces changed everything. And all God's people said, amen. Oh, joyful, joyful. We adore thee. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance. Perseverance, there's no quit in us. <laughs> let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of your faith. I know you've heard that before, but how do you do it? Have you ever really been told, how, how do you fix your eyes on Jesus? When you walk out of here and go about your life, how do you really fix your eyes on Jesus? Well, I'll tell you how. You chain yourself to God's Word. You chain your life to God's Word. You really become a Word man. You really become a Word woman. You chain your life to God's Word. Can I get an amen? Submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. How do you do that? You change your, you chain your life to God's word. Are we in agreement? Man. First, your Christian church, keep it up. Keep it up. Keep being word men. Keep being word women. Keep glorifying God. We want this world to know that eight pounds changed everything. Oh, the baby boy. We gladly. We are gladly chained to God's word. Luke 4, 4 says, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Yeah. And what is the baby boy who's fully God telling us today in his word, and he was the walking word? He's telling you this, take it personal, you have hope. No matter what this world throws at you, you have hope. No matter what this world throws at you, you have hope peace. No matter what this world throws at you, you have joy. Ah. 
is God good or what, huh? Let's say it slow now because we're really beginning to understand it, I think. Mary Christmas. Ooh, huh? Got a different ring to it now, doesn't it, when we understand what he's done for us. Mary Christmas. Oh, God is so, so good. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. We'll change to that word. We're word men and women. We're a church that's about God's word. The pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Don't miss this part. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame. He was, he was crucified. For all our sin and all our shame and all our guilt. And he even said, Father, Father, have you forsaken me? But yet he stayed on that cross. And while he was on that cross, he had joy. You know why? Because he knew what his death would bring. And he knew what his burial would bring. And he knew what his resurrection would bring. It would bring changed life for you and me. We can have forgiveness for all our sins. And it all started with the birth of the baby boy. Ah. <sighs> Do you believe he can change your life? Do you believe he can change your life? Do you believe that he can change anybody's life? Oh, boy, I do. We're, we're, we're living proof, amen? We're living proof. Man, joy is what kept him up there on that cross. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame. You understand, right? You ever done something wrong and you felt shame? You ever done something wrong and you felt guilt? He was feeling the whole world's shame. He was feeling the whole world's guilt. Oh, my goodness. What kept him up there? Joy. Joy knowing that our lives can be changed. How can you not love him? When you really understand, by grace, how can you not love him and want to give him your best and be that witness and be that testimony? I want people to see my hope. What about you? And to see my peace, what about you? And to see my joy, even when life's all upside down, what about you? Because we have the baby Jesus. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3. Father God, I'm asking you to let verse 3 absolutely change our lives. Change us, God. Change us this morning. Verse 3. Consider him, hold that thought. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you not grow weary and lose heart. Consider him. Consider him. You want life change, you consider him. Consider, before you think a thought, you consider him. Would the Lord want me thinking this thought? You consider him. Here's a big one. Before you are in a conversation, and you let words come flying out of your mouth. We've all been there. Consider him. Amen? Our lifestyle, our behavior, how we carry ourselves. Consider him. Do you know how much trouble and heartache <laughs> I would have saved myself and the people that I loved if I really and truly would have considered him? Am I the only one? Consider him. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And all God's people said, amen. Can you look at your neighbor again one more time and say life change? Yeah. Life change. Life change. It's real. I promise. You know what? We can get in a room and fuss and fight about doctrine all day long. But you can't fuss and fight about a changed life, can you? You can't. They once were lost, and now they're found, and you can see it. You can see it. And it all started with the birth of the baby boy. Do you believe that this morning? Okay. Do you believe that this morning? Remember, I got a bad ear. Okay. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. Great text. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks. Now, if you grew up at this time in history and you were little, you wouldn't go up to your ma and say, Ma, I want to grow up and be a shepherd. 
or hey pops, hey, hey dad, I want to grow up and be a shepherd. No, no, no. Shepherds were considered lost causes, outcast misfits. They weren't allowed to town meetings. They weren't allowed to worship services. They couldn't live in the city limits. They lived out in the fields. But yet you're going to see that God saw them as VIPs. What's VIP stand for? Very important. And I want to tell you something. I don't... What the world has told you, what other people have told you, and you may feel like a misfit or lost cause, listen to me. God Almighty says you're a VIP. No, receive it. Somebody needs to receive that. And out there in TV land too, you are a VIP. You are very important to God. And have you ever been around somebody that talks a good game but then never gets it done? God got it done. He sent the baby Jesus. And he sent the baby Jesus for you because you are a VIP. You are very, very important. And I'm going to tell you something. Those that come here to Hershey Christian Church, those on TV land, you are very, very important to us, and thank you for all you do. Isn't it awesome we get to serve the Lord? VIP. God proved it. He sent the baby boy. That night there were shepherds. Staying in the fields nearby, guarding the flocks. You know, that wasn't an easy job now. They had to fight off wolves. They had to fight off bears. They had to fight off bandits. Shepherds back then, they, 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 were, they were a bit behind the scenes. They stayed to themselves, of course. They weren't really allowed to be around anybody. But I tell you what, they were physically fit. These, they, they, were, they were physically fit. These shepherds could get it done, okay? Remember, they're fighting off wolves and bears and bandits. So they're, 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 yeah, they can get it done, historians say. Guarding the flocks of sheep, and here we go suddenly. Poof, I mean, sudden, poof, out of the blue. This has never happened before, you know? They're just standing around, watching their sheep, talking. Maybe they're saying, hey, what'd you bring for a snack tonight? Hey, what did you bring for a snack tonight? Can you share that piece of cheese? I love cheese. I don't know what was going on. But there they were in the field. And suddenly, bada boom, bada bang, poof. An angel of the Lord appeared among them. And the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terrified. Yes, it was spiritual. Yes, it was of God. But they were absolutely terrified. Have you ever been in a situation, a spiritual situation? It was of God, but you were absolutely terrified. I mean, you was shaken terrified. Sophomore year, Cincinnati Bible College, preaching class, my turn to preach. In high school, I would take an F on an oral book report because I wouldn't get up there. But my roommate, my professor, Bob Stacy, talked me into taking the class. And in the class, he taught you things about preaching. And in the second semester, everybody got up and preached. There was two sermons a class. I was the first sermon. I didn't make it. I was in the bathroom. I'll say this as gingerly as I can. I was very sick of my stomach. I was absolutely terrified. I was in the bathroom, leaning over, getting very sick. And my professor left the class and come in the bathroom. And he said, Sam, are you all right? I said, yeah, I'm all right. He said, Sammy, are you going to be able to preach? I'm going to try. That's the way it went down. So I got in there. My breath was horrible. I got in there, and I was scared to death. Fright. I'm, 95% of the guys in there, their daddies was preachers. Some of them were big-time preachers. I mean, they'd been doing this all their life. And I tell you what, I'm just not telling you this for sermon material. I got up there. I said my prayer. I started to preach, and peace just, peace just came over me. I, I, I felt the presence of God. I mean, it, it was just awesome. Has that ever happened to you? Huh? You've been terrified, and you just don't know how you're going to get through it. All of a sudden, man, he brings you peace, and he brings you power. You understand, right? The baby boy changes everything. Who wouldn't want the baby boy to be their Lord and Savior? Gives us hope. Gives us peace, and he gives us joy. That night, the shepherds were staying in the fields nearby, guarding the flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. 
Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. All people. Nobody's excluded. You know, there, there's, there's clubs, certain clubs. That if you don't have so much money or you don't look a certain way, you can't get in. Listen to me. All people. Amen? All people. And I got good news for you. You're all people. TV land, you're all people. The baby boy, he's for all of us. That's good news, isn't it? Huh? I'll bring you good news that will bring you great joy. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Yeah. And it shows great joy to all people. The Savior. The Savior. We have a Savior. Amen? We have a Savior. Isaiah 43, 11, I, yes, am the Lord. There is no other Savior. Acts 4, 12, there is salvation found in no one else. God has given us no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Aren't you happy for the baby boy? Yeah. Luke 19, 10, one of my favorites. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who were lost. Anybody in here ever been lost? Anybody in here ever been lost? Aren't you glad the baby boy come looking for you? Ooh-wee. Once was lost, but now we're found all because of the baby boy. I got to drink a little water to that one. John 3, 17. God sent his son in the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Through him. Merry Christmas through him. Eight pounds, six ounces changed everything. You have a Savior. You have a Savior. Kentucky Kingdom, we went there a lot. It was in Louisville. They had a wave pool. And uh, we went, and Shelby and her mom was just hanging there on the lawn chair talking, and me and Butter went out into the, to the, to the wave pool me and Shelby had done the same thing years before, and Butter wasn't even born yet. But anyway, it's Butter this time. It's funny how history repeats itself. We're out there in the wave pool, and I'm holding Butter's hand, and the waves are coming, and they're hitting my ankles. They're hitting her knees. And she takes her hand out of my hand. First mistake. Takes her hand out of mine and starts to walk away. I said, Butter, get back here. She just shook that head and kept walking. So I went after her. Here come a big wave. Knocked her off her feet. She flew up in the air. She went under the water. I waited 10 minutes, and then I got in the, She went under the water, and I reached in and grabbed her and pulled her up, and she was a coughing and a spitting, and, and I carried her. And I tell you what, that little girl didn't leave my side the rest of the day. But on the way home in the van, you know, I'm driving, and her mom was in there, and they're in the back, and Butter was a talker. I don't know where she got that from, but she was a talker. And every other word she's saying to Shelby, Daddy, save me. Daddy saved me. Shelby goes, I couldn't breathe. I was going to drown. Daddy saved me. And Shelby said, I know. He saved me a few years ago, too. I about drowned out there, too. She said, aren't you glad that Daddy saves us? Daddy saved us. I was drowning, Shelby Grace, and you was drowning. You know what? I was drowning in my sin. You were drowning in your sin. Thank God, our Heavenly Father, sent us a savior. Eight pounds, six ounces changed everything. Remember y'all, we were drowning. Yeah, we were drowning in our sin. Sin that leads to death. We were drowning in it. The baby boy changes everything. Ephesians 2, 1 through 5. Soak it in, okay? As for you, and I'm with you, not at you. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. We were, y'all. In which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, at the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived, past tense, thank God for the baby boy, all of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts like the rest. We, by nature, were deserving of wrath. But here it is, verse 4. You've got to love it. If you want to clap, you can. But because of his great love for us, God, who in his rich mercy made us alive in Christ, even when we we're dead in transgression. We've got to clap. I'll tell you what. The baby boy changes everything. 
greatest lifeguard there ever was. Continue by grace to allow him to guard your life. Walk in that hope, walk in that peace, and walk in that joy. And all God's people said, amen. I'm going to read the text again. I've been asked before, Sammy, why do you read the text on Sunday mornings over and over? Because we need to hear it over and over. <laughs> we need to hear it over. I sure do. Uh, that night, there were shepherds staying out in the fields nearby, guarding the flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said, I bring you good news that will bring joy to all people. All people, the Savior, yes, the Messiah. The Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. Let's stop right there. I like that word recognize. That'll preach. When people hang out with us, do they recognize the hope that the baby Jesus has given us? Be honest. Recognize. I told you I like that word. Do they recognize our hope? Even when life is upside down. When they hang out with us, do they recognize our peace because of the baby boy, even when things aren't going our way and life is upside down? And do they recognize our joy, our joy? Life is absolutely crazy, but we have joy because joy equals Jesus and Jesus equals joy and they recognize it, amen? So tell me, help me preach to the pastor so when folks come in here and checking us out, they recognize the hope. Huh? They recognize the peace. They recognize the joy, right? Because we're all about glorifying the baby boy who is fully God. Ah. Oh. You will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, the armies of heaven. One of my bucket lists that I'll probably never get to do, I think we got a picture of it, is I would love to go to London and go to the great big castle. It's the king of England now, but I would like to see the changing of the guard. I've seen it on TV and it was really cool. We got the picture. Yeah, I just think that would be a fun thing to see would be the changing of the guards. Can you imagine... The shepherds got to see the armies of heaven. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Armies of heaven. And I like that word heaven because someday we're all going to live in heaven because the baby boy changed everything. By a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. That'll preach too. God is pleased. How important is it to us as individuals and a church to please God? Now think about it. Me too, daily routine. How important is it that the life we live pleases God? Sam, again, how do you do that? Well, I'm going to go back to being chained to God's word. It's the bread of life. And I want to give you a scripture that you probably already know that will really help you please God. Are you ready? Matthew 6, You remember that one? As soon as your feet hit the ground, you get dressed, you get ready to rock and roll. Matthew 6, Remember that one? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You want to please him? No, really, do we want to please him? No more just Sunday go to meet, and we want to please him. We want to live this. We want to be authentic. How you do it? You seek the baby boy first. You seek the baby boy first. Are we in agreement? Are we in agreement? Glory to God in the highest heaven. And peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, I'd love to hear that conversation. Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. And they hurried. There was no procrastination. They hurried. With you, not at you. 
There is something in your life that the Lord wants you to change. TV land too. There's something in your life that the Lord wants you to change. And guess what? He wants you to be in a hurry to change it. For you and those around us, no spiritual procrastination. He wants you to hurry. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened. Of course they did. And you know, we tell everyone about the Lord, don't we? And not just with our, with our words, but with our, with our actions. What's that? Oh, when actions speak louder than... Yeah. We're good, though, because the baby boy changed everything. Thank you. Ooh. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. There was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. I like that word too. I want to live in such a way that people are astonished. Not astonished with Sam Stowe, but astonished with the life change that the baby boy gained. Astonished. We want to be the real deal, don't we? No more playing. We want to be the family of God, don't we? Yeah. You know, I, I, I go back and I think in Acts chapter 16, verses 16, y'all remember the story of Paul and Silas? When they were preaching and teaching and doing what God wanted them to do and Paul cast out a demon of fortune telling from this young girl and then they arrested them and stripped them of their clothes and beat them half to death and put them in the stocks. Do we have a stock picture? Put them in the stocks in the middle of the jail. And you know the story, but I want to live this story. Did I tell you they were stripped and beaten, stripped naked in front of everybody? Man and drug into a dungeon and put in the middle of the stocks. And about midnight, they started fussing and they started cussing and they started blaming each other. And they said, we quit on God. It was just the opposite. They started praising the Lord and singing songs and lifting up praise and they radiated with joy. I don't know what jug they were drinking out of, but I want some. I want some. I want a joy jug like that when things are going crazy and life is upside down. And man, I want that kind of joy jug. Lord, pour it on me. Pour it in me for everybody to see. I want hope, don't you? I want peace, don't you? I want joy, don't you? Am I just up here giving a pep rally or can the baby boy do it? Can the baby boy do it? Fully God. Can he really change everything? So you're telling me then we can be living proof. We can be a bunch of LPs. Living proof that the baby boy changes everything. Our thoughts, say that with me. Our thoughts, our conversations, our motives, our behavior. Yeah. Whew. Eight pounds, six ounces. Changed everything. Verse 18, all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart, 14 years old. Ooh. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God. They were changed. They were changed forever. They were never going to be the same. The baby boy had changed them. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. The baby boy fights for us, doesn't he? The baby boy loves us, doesn't he? The baby boy's grace is sufficient. Because of the baby boy, someday we will walk the streets of gold. Who would not accept the gift of the baby boy? You know, I was praying all week for God to give me a closing thought for the sermon today. And, and really, um, nothing, nothing really came to me until this morning. He gave me the closing thought 
for all of us. And it's an encouraging closing thought. I got it, I got it back there during, during, during the, the worship with the song that Kelly B. did. And they, they had to stop. And I believe that was of, of God. She, she stopped and she said, we're going to do a, a do-over. And there it hit me. There's your closing thought, preacher. That'll preach. We're going we're gonna to do a do-over. Okay, I need you to concentrate, and I need you to receive this. Aren't you glad that God does do-overs? Because we all get out of tune, don't we? Aren't you glad that God does do-overs? Wow. Jesus. The baby Jesus. The baby boy changed everything. Hershey Christian Church, can we please be living proof? Please. TV land, can we please be living proof that our great, awesome God is the God of the do -over. Father God, saying we love you, it's not even enough. It's not even close to being enough. So by grace, give us a desire to, to live for you like we never have. I mean, you're coming back. You're, you're, you're coming back. The Bible says you're coming back. Things are happening. You're, you're, you're coming back. But while we're here, while we're here, we get to be an agent of hope and an agent of peace and an agent of joy even when life is upside down. But I want to say this one more time before we say amen. Thank you for being the God of the do-over. Thank you for second, third, fourth, fifth chances. Thank you that God, you know, before you, if people looked at our spiritual, did a spiritual background check on us, we'd be a mess. But because of the baby Jesus, it's a clean slate. Oh, I love you, Lord. Speak to your people. Whatever they need this morning, speak to your people, Lord. As they stand, if they can talk to you, that's cool. If they need to come up for prayer, if they need to make decisions, we just want you to be Lord. We want to be LPs, living proof that the baby boy changes everything. Life change. And all God's people said, amen. Will you stand, please? We're going to sing. If I could have some leaders up here, please.
I'll go first and you guys can do it. Life changer. Life changer. God, baby boy, we can have a life changer. We really can. Oh, God is good. Let's give him a great big hand for loving us so much. 
Thank you for uh, being here today. Again, I just want to remind you about the children's Christmas program Wednesday night, six o'clock. Please get the get the kids out here. It's going to be, excuse me, awesome. Amber's been doing a terrific job. We've been putting in the bulletin something called Plus Two. We've asked you to pray about inviting a couple families to come to church. I'm going to raise the ante this week, <laughs> plus three. It's going to be Christmas Eve on a Sunday morning. It's going to be very, 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 very special. And uh, we'll preach on uh, what a love story. Open up what a love story. So please come out and bring friends and family. But I just want to say this, and then I'll pray. And if I, we have the congregational meeting. I'll give you about 10 minutes. Please stay for it as we're going to vote uh, on the budget. But I want to just pray and this thought again be at the top of our thought pattern here. Do-overs. Thank you, baby Jesus, for doing do-overs. Help us to be living proof that, that a relationship with you changes lives. And we want to be the church. I promise you we do. We want to get this right. We want to please you, God. We sure do. Thank you for sending the baby boy. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you.